Hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining me again on Convertible Conversations as re we resume our series on changing our mind about different things. <clears throat> it's just fascinating to me that I grew up in the church, was there every time the doors were open. My folks were really good people, very involved in the church. No question that they loved the Lord. I got away from that a little bit when I came to college, but then after a few years, I became a pastor and was a pastor for about 20 years before I started realizing that almost everything I had been taught and learned in church and about church and studying was incorrect. Man, it just totally blew my mind. It was a shock to me, and it still is to many people when they start to learn, oh, you mean that's not true? <laughs> Man, somebody's done a job on us. <clears throat> well, today, we're going to talk about changing our mind again about hell. Now, I've taught about hell on, uh, online and lots of different times before. Many of you have heard me and teach and other teachers teach on that. When we grew up, there was, there was no question that hell was real. I used to preach hell is real and real people are going there for a real long time. Well, hell is real, but it certainly isn't what I was taught that it was when I was growing up. Of course, I'm sure you know that the word hell was never in the Bible, in the original language to begin with. <clears throat> the word hell came from H-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, a German word, <clears throat> hundreds of years after the New Testament was written. The three different times that uh, we have a word that uh, English says hell, that came from three different words in the Greek, uh, one of them was Gehenna, which meant the garbage dump just outside of Jerusalem. Uh, another one was Hades, which was the name of the Greek god of the underworld in Greek plays and mythology at that time. And there was another one that was used only once uh, that meant the, uh, the deepest part of the inner core of the earth. Jesus never talked about hell. He talked about Gehenna and he talked about Hades, but never about hell the way we talk about it now. When we, when we hear the term fire and it's associated with hell, here's what it means. God is portrayed as a consuming fire, both in the Old Testament, in the book of Daniel, and in, by the New Testament writers. A consuming fire, as the Apostle Paul laid out very clearly one time, burns up all the impurities in us. So if we've done a bunch of things that uh, we did on our own strength and weren't uh, what God wanted us to do or whatever, those things will be burned up like wood and hay and stubble. But anything that we've done in God's strength that he asked us to do, that will uh, survive the test of the fire like precious diamonds and rubies and sapphires and things like that. But whatever they are, the fire will burn some up, will let some others come through, but we will be saved as if purified by fire. God's consuming fire, I picture it, is his white hot fiery love, his unconditional love for us, and of course, against anything that hurts us. And whether here on this earth or in the next life, my understanding from Scripture is that we will come face to face with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, who is pure love. And His pure, white-hot, unconditional love will just purify and burn away anything and everything in us that is not good. Now, we may resist that, and to the extent that we hold on to something that we think is right and God's wrong about, it's going to feel like hell, not like somebody taking a, a fire and, and burning you with it, but it's going to be uncomfortable, it's going to feel bad, it's going to, you're, I mean, it's just not going to feel good because you're going to realize you're holding on to something that really is not good and it's something that is harmful to you. That is, the, that is what hell is. It's being in the presence of God and holding on to, not wanting to give up the things that we think are right that aren't, and God showing us what is right. But God's white-hot, fiery, all-consuming love in, is always curative, and it's always purifying, and it's always restorative. It's never punitive. The original Greek words that were used to, to talk about uh, those things were... Uh, always talked about it not being a discipline that was just because we were bad and we were going to get the hell beat out of us. No, it's like a loving parent disciplining, disciplining us for the purpose of restoring us and renewing us and purifying us. So that's what hell is. There is no place called hell. There's only one place, and that's in the presence of God, both here on this earth and in the life after. 
So change your mind about what you may have been taught about hell for hell's sake, for heaven's sake. Quit scaring people, especially little kids about it, uh, and tell them the truth. God wants the best for everyone, and he will bring that about. And sometimes it can be painful in the process, but he never gives up. Hey, thanks for watching. See you next time.